go. Good morning, it's Jim and Becky, and together we are With It Retirees in Beaverton, Oregon. Well, in our last mushroom uh, video, I promised that when I got some mushrooms growing, I would come back to you about it, and so here we are. We uh, have some mushrooms, and we are going to do some harvesting of uh, pearl uh, oyster mushrooms, and we also want to show some uh, black pearl oyster uh, king mushrooms that we're growing too. So we're going to harvest into this. This is a uh, 70 plus year old bull. It's just as good as the day it was made. Pyrex. Uh, the, what we're going to put back into our fruiting chamber when we get what we get out out is these uh, fully colonized uh, fruiting blocks. As you can see, every inch of them now is covered with mycelium. That's the mushroom right there. So these are ready to go. These are the black uh, pearl. I discovered after I put this on there and started messing with these that my, uh, my marks for black pearl are exactly like my marks for blue uh, pearl too, which is a completely different mushroom. So I have two of them. I hope I have everything right, but I think I do. So it's something to remember. So anyhow, let's get started here. I'm going to pull this cover off of here. This is uh, a second flush on these. So we're going to uh, get rid of these blocks and put some more blocks in the ones that I've got in there. So I'm going to just pull them out. And as I get them, I'm just going to cut them off into this bowl like so. These uh, mushrooms, you don't eat the stems quite as much on these. Whoops. There we go. And then we'll get rid of that. I will take these out into the garden. There's nothing to these really but sawdust. So that's a beautiful thing in there. Um, so you can really easily recycle them. You just take the plastic off and uh, break them up and, and you have good mulch. <clears throat> so this is the last one. It's pretty too. If these come, as you see, these are just in the last stages ready. If this tip went up like that, it would be too late. So this is the last of when it's good to trim, just exactly right. And this will make just enough. I should say that I'm the only one in this outfit that eats mushrooms. So that's just plenty for one person to eat for a meal. Uh, and that's exactly what we're going to do. If you keep these in the... Uh, refrigerator, which is where you should keep them, keep them in a uh, uh, brown paper bag and they'll stay better. They have a little room to breathe in there. They're not good for more than two or three days, I don't think. You can't, uh, by the way, buy mushrooms like this uh, anywhere except possibly the, uh, the farmer's markets. So these, uh, and they cost a lot of money, so they're kind of hard to come by. So the next one I want to show you, I'm not going to harvest it today, I'm just bringing it out, is my black pearl king mushrooms and these are kind of a mysterious breed they're a, a cross between a king mushroom and a, a regular oyster mushroom and they the uh, stalks are just as good to eat on these as the cap this uh, is not quite ready to eat yet the caps are going to get a little bit bigger and they, they're, they're pretty right now they're a beautiful combination between the white and the dark and uh, I'll let you know how they taste. But uh, these two blocks here are the same thing and I'm gonna have two more go in. So we will eat these uh, harvest in a couple of days. And that goes back in there. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna leave it out for now. Uh, <clears throat> the next thing I wanna talk about is a fruiting chamber. If you, uh, if you get a little further into the hobby and you decide you wanna do something a little more uh, permanent and, and a better deal than just getting like a, a, a tub like we showed in the one video, you uh, you may want to get a fruiting chamber. Now this particular fruiting chamber is made out of a 20 gallon fiberglass aquarium, which you probably are not going to come across. Uh, but there are <coughs> many other things that will work. When you talk about the body of the, the unit itself, what you have to keep in mind is uh, it needs to be ventilated. This has got an open top with a screen that's actually 90% shade cloth, so that it's, uh, I guess you'd call it semi-permeable 
it will hold down a little bit of the fog and stuff, but not everything. Uh, you need to have holes. I have cut holes in the side of this. You can you can buy uh, propagation chambers for plants that look that are similar to this that have holes cut. I have them on either side, as you'll notice, and up high and down low. The uh, the reason for this is mushrooms do not like uh, CO2. So what we do is, uh, is and, then, and it is heavier than air, so hopefully it uh, exits at the lower ones and the air comes in at higher ones. But uh, that's the story. You need also to remember that uh, you have to wash this, you know, and clean it and, and um, put alcohol in it. So whatever you're using, you need something that will hold up pretty well. They use a commonly uh, what they call a Martha tent, which is a, a basically Martha Stewart indoor uh, little greenhouses, and there are other brands too, that work, but uh, after a while, everything starts to rust up on the inside. And keep in mind that all that plastic and everything, you gotta keep it clean. So if you're only doing a couple or three blocks like me, uh, you need something that you can wipe down. So if you come on forward a little bit, look inside here, uh, we have racks. These are just kitchen racks, like you put cans and stuff on that I like, cut the bottoms off of. They're pretty easily cleanable. And once you've taken them out, you'll see that this fiberglass here can very easily be cleaned with alcohol. Uh, the other part about these you have to remember is they, a whole bunch of water gets in the bottom of these. So you have to be able to get the water out and you have to have a pan, whatever you've got, that will hold the water on the bottom. I use this uh, Walmart sponge that costs under $2. You can suck up a pint and a half of water with this with one glurk and you can just you pull those out and you just clean the bottom out and then wipe it out put it back and you're good to go so uh the reason there's water down there is because mushrooms liking uh high humidity so the next part of the setup is you have to have a way to control your humidity what we have here is a, a reptile fogger this one is uh beta zoo is the brand it's, it served me well. Uh, what you have to remember is they have a limit to their capacity. This holds about half a gallon of water. So about every two days right now, I have to fill this up. It depends on the humidity everywhere else and stuff like that. So, so this is connected to uh, Inkbird controller here, which these are relatively inexpensive. Uh, and I have it set at something like 80 and 93. So at 80 degrees, uh, or excuse me, 80% humidity is going to kick in, and at 93% humidity, it will kick out. And while it's in, which it is right now, shine down in there, you can see the fog coming in. So what happens is this fog is going to come in until right over here on this side is a, a sensor for humidity. When that sensor gets up to 93, then it's going to kick off. And it just keeps going on and off, so on and so on. Over on this side, we have temperature control, which is what you're reading right here. Something you'll notice is uh, the fog cools it down considerably, and mushrooms like cool, so that's a good thing. Uh, if it's 68 in here, it'll be 64, 65 degrees in there, or constantly. Uh, so the next thing, we put a top on this one. If you'll notice, this is just a, a aluminum channel that I epoxy to there. This is a uh, um, a screen kit like you would repair a screen with. And again, I have 90% shade cloth in there. I slide that in there like that. And then if I need to hold the humidity in even more, I will put something like this in. Now, on top of all that, we have here, this is a, uh, it's on as you see, a computer fan, I'm sorry about that, I'm always holding them too high, uh, that's on low and it's just blowing, you can just feel air nice and calm, and I take that around here, and the reason for that again is mushrooms like fresh air and humidity, so it's all a little balancing game. And then when you get your unit put together, you, you can uh, play with even where the bricks go, even on a little thing like this, they go, uh, you get a little different humidity at different places. So anyhow, that is the uh, the basis of the unit. And uh, 
that's all I have to say today, I guess. So uh, we will uh, get back with you when you have something else to show you. Talk to you later.